everyone, welcome back to Event Sense. I'm Chuck Vieira. So we are back into the fall wedding season, and with the fall wedding season comes the fall fashion season. And you know, you hear a lot of attention is paid uh, to women with the say yes to the dress and all the girls wedding fashion and the bridesmaid dresses and all that, but the men don't get any love. And the men's are always the clueless ones. Excuse me, the men are always the clueless ones. You know, every time I'm at a wedding or when I'm planning the wedding, it's always the man who's just kind of like, I don't know, man. I'm just going to dress in whatever colors they tell me to that's going to match the bridesmaids. You know, the men don't get any love. And they're seeming aren't many resources out there for men to to really you know get up on their fashion to really bone up on their fashion and but you know there is one guy out there and it's Kin Moy from Style Me Boston and he has joined us this evening to talk about some men's fashion and some fall fashion for events and for everyday casual living Kin thanks so much for joining us Hey, thank you for having me. Glad to be here. So, uh, you are the owner of Style Me Boston. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? So, Style Made Easy Boston, or Style Me Boston, is an image consulting firm run by myself. But more importantly than just being an image consultant, where I'm going to help people dress to portray the image that they want to exude, I also consider myself a style coach because I, you know, they say you can. Uh, give a man a fish and feed him for the night or teach a man a fish and feed him for the rest of his life. I feel like what I do or what I try to do or I make available to my clients is that I'll teach them how to dress themselves. So after we do one of our, um, you know, usually our, my service will run for like four to six weeks. And by the end of that, they're completely self-sufficient. They know how to dress themselves. They know how to shop. They know how to get things tailored and altered for them. So that's really the, the meat of what I'm trying to do. Um, but it go, it goes all the way. I mean, I can go into someone's closet, help them sort out the best pieces. Um, I'll take them shopping. I'll take them to the tailors. Uh, the whole. I even have do uh, made to measure clothing for them for the people who want to, you know, take the extra step in the direction of luxury and fit. So uh, that was a bit of a mouthful. But there's there's a lot that uh, I do at Style Made Easy Boston. Uh, there needs to be a mouthful, and I do apologize. It's Style Made Easy Boston. Style Me Boston is is kind of a nickname. Um, it's it's something that you guys are, are, are you know no, known on social media by. It's your handle on social media, right? Yeah, it is. Right. I do, Style um, Me Boston. No, it, yeah, no, it's it's me being a little silly or a little cheeky because the um the the abbreviation you know made made easy M E. Yeah. It was just easier because if you're trying to write made easy, you yeah, type yeah. that in. Style um, made style easy Boston. Boston. Style made easy Boston. But, so yeah, you, style made easy. Style me Boston. It's all the same. But stylemeboston.net is my website because I just couldn't type all. It was just too much. Stylemeboston.net. I like it. So you you are a fashion coach. Style coach. Style coach. I'm sorry. Style coach. See, I'm getting it all wrong, dude. See. No, no worries, man. I mean, the difference just being that fashion is, yeah. it, you know, usually speaks to trends. Um, so, like, like male rompers, it's a trend that's yeah. probably not here to stay. Whereas style is usually would refer to something that is is immortal. It's timeless. Uh, for instance, like blazers, suits, they're not going away anytime soon. They've been here for a long time. Yeah, yeah. So you know this 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 interview was, as you know, going to be the five biggest fall uh, fashion trends of the fall season. But but I like the approach that you go with, you know, your overall approach of, of, of it's about style. You know what I mean? So given that approach that you go with and the fact that you're not about the trends, what direction or what advice would you give the the fashion layman headed into this fall wedding season? You know, what are the what are the the the, the best ways to style oneself for, for the fall event? season well i'm gonna say that um in terms of weddings a little bit a little bit different than uh than just general general wear but i'd say that keep in mind that you know summer is a time for really vibrant bright colors and fall is still the time there's you know there's colors but they're you know earthier tones so i'd say that you know instead of wearing that sky blue suit it might be time to take it down to like a gray or charcoal or if you were going to do a blue bit of a deeper blue that's not as again you don't want to think like uh the 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 image that it evokes shouldn't be like you know uh, a, a beach at sunset yeah. um it should be more like you know like crisp autumn day walk in the park kind of thing yep and now, i'd say go ahead i apologize for interrupting you i know i know that you're you're, you're flowing now should the should the should the um attire that one wears 
even 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 attending a wedding even if i'm just going to a wedding as a guest and 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 please correct me if i'm wrong that there are obviously different levels of dress but how much attention should be paid in your opinion if i'm heading to to a wedding should i wear should should what i wear at the rehearsal dinner flow with what i wear to other activities with and then that ultimately flow with what i wear to the wedding reception you know what i'm saying well what what i say to that is that what i say to that is that what how you you know how you dress and what you wear will lar- will play a large factor in how you present yourself so i'd say that it depends on how well do you want to present yourself because you know what does it say uh, if you're going to your friend's rehearsal dinner dressed in like sweatpants and a t-shirt? How you know they say style is is a form of good manners. I mean, what are you communicating to your friend by you know showing up looking like a bum? So I'd say that you should take it seriously. Whichever, uh, obviously the the day itself, the wedding ceremony is very important. But even the rehearsal dinner, I mean, try to look good. Try to put your best foot forward and you want that to be a, a memorable experience for them and you want it to be memorable for the right reasons and even if in some small way you want to be contributing to the good part of that yep understood so so if i'm wearing an earthy tone like a like a maybe a light brown or i don't even know if i would wear a light brown in a suit but if i was wearing an earthier tone like you said like a charcoal gray so so you know could you go with charcoal gray you know what I'm saying, kind of like that color tone or that 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 feel between every event that you go to to kind of give off that this overall. You, do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm just not as good at the at, at, at the lingo. You know what I'm saying? But your whole entire kind of ensemble, you can it it would be. Is it appropriate to to make it flow from? You know what I'm saying? If you wear charcoal gray uh, accents. Across whatever event you're going to. Uh, yes. Thank you. I don't know if it's, I don't wouldn't consider it super important. I'd say that, you know, your, your staples, um, some staples are, are good year round. I mean, for instance, like a white, you know, like white shirts, light blue shirts, you can wear them any season. Um, I think, though, that really it's, it's less about choosing specific colors uh, for fall that you want to wear around. I'd say it's just avoiding certain colors that are more summery. Like again, like you know, you got like those salmon, those salmon chinos. Probably time to put them away. Right. Yep. If it makes sense. So it's it's you know, but I, I'd say that yeah, like the color palette that you might want to invoke um, is more you know, like the grays, the browns, the yep. you know the the blue, the green, the deeper, slightly more somber tones. Even even berry though, like you know, like the like burgundy looks good too and i'd yep. say that also with, with the wedding um and with any wedding even even if it were a summer wedding you could still wear a gray suit but how you might dress that up for a summer wedding is your tie might be very brightly colored you might choose to go with like you know like uh like a lilac tie yep. or you know a yellow tie or something like that whereas if it were in the fall you might choose a more muted tone like a like a you know like a, like a burgundy like a muted burgundy right. or orange like a you know darker orange you know there's there's a lot of options for you there um but i think that again it's just to keep it is to keep it rooted in in the season and the color palette of the season understood so what advice do you have for brides whose fiancés are simply clueless when it comes to fashion like what what would you say to them that is a tough question to answer uh in that I what I, like we were discussing before. I have a um, one of my longest, actually my longest time client. He's become, he's learned how to dress himself. He's extremely well dressed now, and he was in, um, he was one of the groomsmen for a wedding very recently, and he got flooded with questions from the bride, from the other, from the from the other groomsmen about you know like what tie, what pocket square, how what you know what color belt do you wear with what color shoes. You know, like, does this shirt fit right? And the thing is, what I'll say is that even though a lot of the men didn't, you know, were not into style, were not into fashion, by the end of it, he got everyone dressed up and looking really good. And by the end of it, there were these dudes who were just totally, like, you know, like, like rugged, like, not interested in that kind of thing. But they, like, cared a lot and were really happy with how they looked. I think one of the funniest stories he told me was that, um, you know, this dude who was, like, uh, like a really big jack, like, 
cop from you know like Western Mass who just you know never dressed up. He he had his pocket square like looking just right, and then the um, the bride wanted to lend the pocket square to her father for a picture, and he was really like, no no no, you can't have it. <laughs> And then, like you know, snatch it back immediately, and like spent like five minutes in the mirror trying to like fix it so you look good. So I mean, I think at the end of the day, even though a lot of guys, you know, might feel a little shy about about caring about style, everyone wants to look good. And I think that the big thing that you know a bride can emphasize is is that you know uh, is that they that they can look good, and they should look good, and they should feel comfortable doing it. And I think that. It can be really overwhelming trying to figure out how it is. So if I were to give them one tip, it would to be just nail the fit, make sure that everything fits well. And uh, you know that's very general. So what I'll say is, style, um, on stylemeboston.net, I have an article, uh, a, a brief guide to fit, where it'll tell you how your shirt should fit, how a suit jacket should fit, how your pants should fit, and just reference everything across that. And I've got pictures about you know I'll talk about like the collar, the you know, the shoulder, all that, and I'll have a picture next to it, and you can just tell whether something fits or it doesn't, and then you can tell whether you should buy this garment or not, and you, should, you can tell whether you, you know what to ask for at the tailor. So I think that even if they don't worry too much about the colors, that's important but secondary. Just make sure that everything fits well, and you'll look good. Yeah. Yep, uh, that's really important. StyleMeBoston.net. Don't forget to go check out that fit guide. That's really important. Ken, you know, the, the general consensus is, especially when it comes to a men, and I don't even know if a lot of men exist that there are style coaches out there for men. I know We know that there are women's fashion consultants out there everywhere, but many people think that they can't afford or they don't need a, a fashion consultant or a style coach, as, as I really like that, that term. Um, that title for you, um, uh, either for an event or in general, what do you say to the people who believe that it's either A, unaffordable, or B, just not needed for the for the average person? Well, I'd say I'll address the, the, the second part um, first, sure. which is that who doesn't need to look good? I mean, yeah, I'd say that in some cases, you know, if, if you're working with your hands a lot and that sort of thing, it might not be important on a regular basis. But there's going to be a time and a place where every man has to make a good impression. And unfortunately, people are, you know, for better or worse, people are judged by how they look. You'll notice if you're looking, if you're um, asking for directions, you generally will ask someone who's well-dressed and looks good because, not because they look good, but because they look like they've got it together. We assume a lot about someone based on how they're dressed. I mean, if we didn't know who Steve Jobs was, that he was Steve Jobs, we'd be like, Who's this guy? He's a bum, you know? Like, I'm not gonna, you know, what's he know? What would he know about anything? Whereas you got someone who looks like, you know, like Conor McGregor, and you didn't know he was Conor McGregor, and so instead of going over and asking for his autograph, you just think, wow, this guy's got stuff together, like, you know, and he yeah. could, someone who's well dressed could walk up. Like, for instance, I, you know, like, if I'm, when I'm like wearing a, a well fitted suit, I could walk up and tell someone that I'm a, a neuroscientist and they, you know, might believe me and I'll, I'll make some bullshit up and they'll just be like, yeah, yeah, probably true. Whereas, yeah. you know, so long story short, I'd say that, again, there's going to be time in every man's life where he needs to make an impression. And even if it's rare, I mean, I've had a couple of guys who, you know, don't want to dress up much, but they've come to me and they've been like, listen, like, I'm proposing to my girlfriend. I want to, you know, make a good impression with her parents, yeah. things like that. And they're like, you know, please help me, like, look like James Bond for this. And yeah. Yeah. Or, or that they're going to a wedding, right? Or they're going to a big event. You need to look good, you know? Really need to. to... I mean, the people who you know have to meet customers or who have to you know do do business in a, in a formal setting, people judge you a lot. Yeah. And you know, even if it's subconscious, like you, a lot of times I'm guilty of it too. And you know, you think I'd be better than this because I have met people. You know, I've worked with a lot of men who I know are very capable and smart and have it together. But a lot of times, like I'll, so I know that, and then I'll teach them how to go from being schlubby to being very suave and well-dressed, but um, even though I know that that doesn't mean anything, I still look at people a lot and just assume, because they look like right. kind of schlubby, that they don't have it together, that they're not very competent. So unfortunately, you know, a lot of us, everyone does it just as a subconscious bias. So that's why everyone, even if they don't get a style coach, they should just make sure that things fit them well and that they coordinate their colors decently and wear the right um, clothes to the right event. I mean, for instance, the other thing too is say, you know, if you work in a professional environment, you show up in sneakers, like someone might not even say anything, but they might just kind of like look at you like, oh, this guy's right. a joke. You know? 
So, I mean, I guess that's the other thing, too, because there's being, like, really stylish, and then there's just being, you know, well-dressed enough that you can function. So mm-hmm. I think that you definitely absolutely need that. And, I mean, as for being stylish, again, like, hey, who doesn't want to be treated better and have better things assumed about them? Right. And if you don't, I mean, hey, maybe you don't need one. As for the affordability, here's, here's the big one. And, again, <laughs> another shameless plug. I have an article about it on my website called uh, The Price of Error. I bet that most people, just because they have, you know, just new clothes or whatever, have spent thousands of dollars on clothes over time. Um, And the thing about, the biggest thing I do with that is I save people money by making sure that everything that they own works together. I make, I get them an interchangeable core wardrobe, which is to say that... Hey, so usually, um, I actually had another article I just wrote, which was about you know, building your core wardrobe. I show with pictures how you can, with 14 items, with three pants, three shirts, two belts, two shoes, matching in color, um, a sweater, a blazer, two ties, and one pocket square, can make 105 different outfits. 14 wow. items, 105 different outfits. The reason this works is because all of the items can go with any of the other items. And then you can completely change the look by putting on a sweater and a tie or a blazer and a tie. Wearing the blazer without a tie looks very different than wearing it with a tie. And you can reconfigure it so that with most 14 items, you could go to work, you know, you could spend like at least half the half the year wear with just those clothes and wear something completely different that looks different. You that's, know what I'm saying? That's amazing. And that will save you, that will save you money though. Because a lot of guys only think of things in terms of either garments. They'll be like, oh, this is a sick jacket. I'm going to buy that jacket. They go home. I don't know what to wear this jacket with. Right. Or some people are a little more savvy and they'll think in terms of outfits. And I've had guys, you know, I know a lot of guys who like, you know, they'll, they'll go and buy an outfit altogether, like a pair of pants that goes with this shirt, that goes with this sweater and these shoes. And then, but I'll, I'll be like, oh, yeah, this guy looks like he knows what he's doing. But then later he'll be like, oh, man, can like... I feel like I only have like two or three good outfits though. And I'm like, well, the problem is if you don't have, if they're not interchangeable, then you can buy, spend tons of money on a bunch of different outfits. Right. Where, but why do that? We can just have a couple that can be swapped around and yes. make something new. Right. So, so again, it's about the core wardrobe and you'll save thousands of dollars doing that. And in terms of, and the other thing too is like, worse yet, how much money do the guys waste buying something that they're like, I'm going to look great in this. And then they're like, this looks, and then it doesn't actually look that good, like the colors don't work or it fits them terribly. Mm-hmm. And then maybe worse yet, because I've known some people who, I, or some people, my clients, they're like, I'm going to throw this jacket out. I'm like, don't throw this jacket out. I know it doesn't look that good right now, but it fits you in the right places. We could, you know, take it to a tailor and make it look amazing on you. Mm-hmm. And you've already spent hundreds of dollars on this. Like, don't throw this out yet. You know, like, yep. so it's, there's a lot of ways in which, yeah, it is an investment. But again, it's an investment in something as important as your image, which everyone's going to judge you by, for the better or worse. Yep. And and your image is your personal brand too. But in any case, it'll also save you. You know, it's worth investing money in, but also save you money because the price of error is much higher. It's almost you've heard the saying, "Buy once, cry once." Like, why well, keep buying a bunch of things, finding out it doesn't really work, and just throwing out buying something new, and just repeating the cycle forever. Yep. Yep, that's that's really that's really good points, and it's something that the average, especially man, does not ever think about. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like. I like how you really like look into it, like you know the 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 meat and potatoes of it, and you really, yeah, it's an investment into you, but you're gonna find somebody ways to save money on their overall wardrobe. You know what I mean? On the overall amount of clothes they buy, and you know what I mean. The average the average human being just does not, you know what I mean, ever think of stuff like that. So uh, I really a appreciate and and really like that about you. That's really cool, and so. My, my final question for you, and this wasn't on the list of questions that I sent you, and so I am throwing you a curveball, but that's all right, dude. I'm tall and skinny, right? Like like toothpick skinny, right? Like different body types, and you say fit, fit, fit. It's all about fit. I feel like, and I'll be right honest with you, that if I wore something that like wicked fit me, that it would look terrible because I'm so thick, thin. Like, What do you say for the people that say like my body type just isn't conducive for like what you're saying? What do you say to people that say that to you? Absolutely. Well, I'd say that there are some things that are general in fit and there are some things that are relative in fit, which is to say that you know, for instance, here's, here's a big, big loop where I see a lot. Your uh, jacket should always show you know, like uh, when your when your when your arm is dangling, it should show like um, 
a half or a quarter inch of sleeve at all times. So that's something that's 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 relative. I mean, that's a sorry, that's general one that goes applies to everyone. Like if your jacket isn't showing, you know, like half an inch of sleeve, yeah. you're doing it wrong. Um, or for instance, your pants like they shouldn't be a big clumpy mess at your feet. That's just wrong. Right. But that being said, there are certain things that you can do um, to alter or to visually like give an optical illusion for someone's proportions. So for instance, for instance, if you're tall and skinny, I probably wouldn't have things tailored as fit to you as I would to someone who's shorter. Uh, because if I leave, if things are, if you're tall and skinny, if things are fit to you really tightly, then you'll look like a toothpick. Right. Whereas if I, what I do is instead of, you know, having things be very close fitting, I'll insinuate your figure where I'll make sure that the, the, um, you know, the garment is wide at your shoulder or fits at your shoulders, which is wider than your waist. So I'll take it in a little bit towards the waist to give that shape, that triangular masculine shape, but I won't put it right in there where it's like, oh, that, 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 guy, that guy is literally like a, a small waist or something. Yeah. I'll give it that shape, you know what I'm saying? And then similarly with, with the legs, like I'm going to make sure that there's a clean silhouette in your legs so it's not all clumpy at the bottom. And obviously, I'm also not going to make it too short, so you're like wearing high water cell and really, you know, make it look extra tall. Um, but I'll make sure that it has a good, again, a good shape. But I won't make it too thin, so it will make your legs look legs look like they have a little bit more, you know, meat to them than they have. And then similarly, for someone short and athletic like me, I have to I wear things pretty fitted. Again, not like shouldn't be pornographically fitted, but it makes me look a little bit taller and a little bit, um, you know, leaner and less stocky. So and I I played around you know I play around with the guy with the guy specifically like there was um you know I worked with uh, cage tight well I don't know if I should get to that that specific that I worked with uh, some I worked with some gentlemen who um, were announcing for uh, an MMA event and they were broadcast from a live stream across the internet and one of them was you know very tall or not very tall but he was tall and very you know bulky and wide around the midsection but with the well tailored suit. And, and clothes, he looked amazing. He looked so much more athletic yep. uh, and less, you know, heavy than he actually was. And we, you know, just again made it so that because there are the, you know, I guess long story short, you know, even whatever your body type is, there, you know, we have an idea of what the ideal proportions are, and we can tweak. The way things fit to make it look like you have more ideal proportions. Like if you've got a tall torso and short legs, where we make your suit jacket end to make you look like you have longer legs than you really do. Something that I do for myself a lot. So I guess long story short, optical illusions, man. We can make if the the right fit for your body type is gonna be different than my body type, but the right fit will make either of us look more like the perfect Adonis, I guess. But you can find it. You can find it. And I like that. So his name is Kin Moy from Style Made Easy Boston. His website is stylemeboston.net. It is packed with lots of great information, lots of great fashion resources. Kin, we really appreciate you joining us here on Event Sense. We invite you on anytime. We want you back talking about holiday fashion. We want you back talking about all sorts of things. We need you to help because there's a lot of men out there that need help, brother. Well, I'll be happy to hear. Uh, I'll be happy to be here anytime. I love talking about style and fashion. I can go on forever, and any chance I get to talk about it, I'd be more than happy to. All right, stylemeboston.net, style made easy Boston. If you need fashion consultants, ladies, brides, send your husbands to style made easy Boston, stylemeboston.net. Have your fiance call Kin Moy. Have the entire bridal party. Have his groomsmen call Kin Moy. Ken's going to hook them up, and he's going to have them looking sharp, not only at the wedding, but beyond it as well. Ken, we really appreciate you coming out, my friend, and uh, we look forward to having you back. It was my pleasure. I can't wait to be back. All right. Thanks a lot. Take it easy.